And Makkah al-Mukarramah is the Vatican city and Vatican state, the capital city of the Muslim world being the Makkah al-Mukarramah. Then the holy see, the holy seat of the patriarch of the Muslim ummah and the leader, unending, permanent, eternal leader of the Muslim ummah, the holy see is al madinatul al-Munawwarah. Why? The Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stated in Sahih al-Bukhari from Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, ma min mu'minin illa wa ana awla bihi fi dunya wal akhirah. O kama qala alayhi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, there is not a single believer for whom I'm not closer to him than his own self in this world and the hereafter. Which means he has established himself as the leader with the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the spiritual, religious, political, every type of leadership under the sun has been vested in the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam till the day of Qayyama and beyond Qayyama as well by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the highest office being the office of Nubuwat and Risalat and Khatimul Anbiya. Now, keeping this in mind and keeping in mind that what the Holy Prophet said, there isn't a single believer that I am closer to him than his own self in this world and in the hereafter. And the Prophet said, Iqra'u in shi'tum. Read if you want. If you want dalil from this from the Quran, read, awla bil min anfusim, that the Prophet of Allah is closer to you than your own selves. And then he made a very important statement. He said, Whosoever from amongst you leaves any inheritance, then that inheritance is for the heirs. But if any one of you leaves any debt, if any one of you leaves any debt, then you come to me. If you owe anybody money, if you are in financial difficulty, then you come to me because Ana Mawla. I am your protector. I am your guardian. I am the one who will take care of you. So what did the Holy Prophet say something? Fi dunya wal akhirah. In the world and in the hereafter. And the mu'minun are going to be into the world till the day of Qayyama. So which means that the Holy Prophet Sallallahu established a role for Al-Madinatul Munawwara. And being the holy see of the Muslims, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that Al-Madinatul Munawwara must become the social welfare capital of the Muslim world. If the Muslim world is in dire financial crisis, in dire financial need, like you have the Vatican Bank, which of course is involved in money laundering, okay? If you look at the 2012 uh, uh, United Nations, uh, United States Narcotics Agencies thing there, it was regarded as, as, as a medium threat because of money laundering activities. I'm saying, Bila Tashbi or Tamsil, I'm saying, Medina can be the money laundering capital of the Muslim world as well. Why? Take your zakah and send it to Al Madina to Murawwara in a proposed future for the Muslim territories. Take all the zakah of the Muslim world, two and a half percent. Not necessarily all, but a large portion of it. And use al madinatul Munawwara as the social welfare state for the Muslim world. Sure. Do you know what can happen to that? The re-establishment of the Baytul Mal from al madinatul Munawwara. And remember the concept of Khums. I won't get into the jurisprudential issue. But, but the point is, the Quran has these guidelines. And we have the sacred territories to be able to do that to govern 1.2 Muslim, 1.2 billion Muslims of the world. Regardless of what our opinions may be and ideological opinions may be. But there is some degree of coherence if we utilize these sacred territories the way Allah and His Rasul had designed them for in the first place. Al Madinatul Munawwara can become the social upliftment capital of the Muslim world. Right? Makkah, the place for refuge for particularly women and children. Look at Makkah al Mukarramah today, how underutilized the potential of Makkah al Mukarramah is. I just look, I was watching it right now on, 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 on TV, you know, the satellite one for, 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 for Salatul Jum'ah. Okay? All that you see around the Haram are what? Massive, massive. Tourist destinations, hotels, for people to come inside, they stay for a couple of days, play exorbitant amounts there, and leave. That's it. And who benefits from it? A handful of businessmen. A handful of businessmen, that's it. How many more hospitals do you see in Makkah? How many? This may be one state hospital, two state hospital. If you see the amount of space taken by hotels only within the precincts of the Haram, Right? And if you were to take maybe 20% or 30% of the space to establish hospitals, specialized hospitals for Muslims throughout the world who can come during the periods of Umrah, who can come during the periods of Hajj and whatever it is there and be, be given treatment free of charge. Which the Saudi government does to a certain degree but your Hajj tax pays for it as well. So I don't think they're doing you a favor. Okay? 
if it could be utilized for major ops for Muslims, bypasses and uh, cataract surgeries and whatever it is, free of charge from the Muslim Ummah, khalas, on behalf of the Muslim Ummah, for the Muslim Ummah, put up five hospitals like that. Regional hospitals, regional hospitals, if they can perform, perform plus minus about 50 bypasses a week or whatever it is, if you establish only three like that in Makkah al Mukarramah, in Anar al Makkah al Mukarramah, what an impact it will have for not only the people coming there but for the rest of the Muslim world. The Israelis do it. They fly people from all over the world to get the best type of treatment that they can give in Israeli hospitals for the Jewish people. If you are Jewish, automatically you qualify. Why not for the Muslim Ummah? What? We're lacking money? We're lacking resources? We're lacking space? We've got it there. It doesn't belong to anyone. Well, currently it does. Currently it does. Right. Then we have Al Ardul Muqaddasa, a very important, very interesting as well. Is Makkah al Mukarramah has its association primarily with Ibrahim alayhi salatu salam, fundamentally with Ibrahim alayhi salatu salam, because it was his wife Bibi Hajra who founded the city of Makkah al Mukarramah and her son Ismail alayhi salatu salam. And the rites of Hajj are focused primarily on the rites performed in one form or the other by Ibrahim Khalilullah alayhi salatu salam and his family. Right. Al Madina al Munawwara has its exclusive importance. And, and significance primarily because of the greatest of creation, Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, our leader in all respects too. And Ardul Muqaddasa has its association with Isa alayhi salatu salam. Past as well as future. Because according to a hadith, Isa alayhi salatu salam, when he conquers Jerusalem and he drives out the Zionist forces, what will he do? He will rule the world as a king, as a monarch, as a president from Jerusalem. And his past history, how true, how untrue, that's not the issue right now, we've discussed it before, is also connected to Jerusalem. The church of the Holy Sepulchre is in Jerusalem. And Jerusalem is an interesting one because I would make that the judicial and jurisprudential capital for the Muslim world. Why? It will deal with interfaith relations because it is a seat, it is, is common to all the Abrahamic faiths, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Interfaith connections, foreign relations with various other countries and whatever it is, will diplomatic status will come out from there. And you would have the jurisprudential capital. Why am I saying jurisprudential capital there? Because it has close geographical and territorial links with Egypt, with Syria, and other parts of the world. It used to be part of Sham anyway. So the ulama will not necessarily be concentrated from the Hijaz area. It will be concentrated from the large parts of the Muslim world. Because you had ulama who were Basri, who were Kufi, who were Madani, and so on, who were Hijazi, and whatever it is. And you need that, that you know, the, almost like a cross-pollination of scholars who can come together not only between Muslims but people of other faiths as well we, we need to realize and understand this fact here that we are not living on an island we are not an isolated people and Islam never ever isolated other faiths as well and if you want to see it you know it's, it's a pity that our people uh, we go to Makkah al-Mukarrah al-Madina al-Munawara and so on but very few of us ever visit al-Aqsa very few of us visit Jerusalem right it's, it, it's a magnificent city and it's a city repeat with history. What we should have had in Makkah, what we should have had in Medina, is still being preserved to a great degree in Jerusalem. Really. But of course, we have a problem currently. Why? Because these three sacred territories that I'm presenting as a proposed sacred territory, a proposed future for the sacred territories, currently is, being, is under siege in Hijaz by the Saudi and in, 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 in Al-Aqsa, in, in Ardul Muqaddasa by the Yahudi. And until the Muslims can't rescue these sacred territories and declare it as the, as the property, so to speak, in inverted commas, of the Muslim Ummah, for the utilization of the Muslim Ummah, for the benefit of the Muslim Ummah and the greater world out there, we Muslims are not going to get anywhere. Tell me what you want with all the sex scandals. Tell me what you want with all the financial scandals. The Vatican is loaded with all those financial scandals. They still give a degree of semblance of leadership and some way forward for 1.2 billion Roman Catholics. If you were to ask what function does Makkah al Mukarramah play in the life of a Muslim sitting in Timbuktu? Nothing. Besides going for Umrah and Hajj at his own expense, Makkah plays no role in his life. 
besides that on ending was Qibla. Medina, same story. Al Ardu al Muqaddasa, same story. Yet that can be changed. And that's the way we should be thinking for the future. Right? Whether it's going to be achievable or not, we don't know. But the point is, if we start thinking in that direction, that it could open up other avenues. And this is what we need. Look at it. Imagine if we had these institutions in place, the amount of leverage we would have. If the Holy See alone has diplomatic relations with 180 countries, 180 countries with the exception of Saudi Arabia and some other Muslim and, and Chinese states and whatever it is there, right? Imagine if Makkah al Mukarramah, Al Madinah al Munawwara primarily were recognized as independent Muslim states involved in all issues, whether it's with the World Health, the World Health Organization, whether it's with UNICEF, whether it's with any atomic energy, whatever it is, it would give us Muslims some degree of clout, number one, some degree of information as well from the point of view that you know what you'd have people who would be actively involved in issues which are topical issues which are affecting the muslim world and they'll have direct access if we want to have access to international uh, atomic uh, uh, you know institute they, who, who's our contact go ask the holy see he'll tell you there's our contact here there's here we don't have that we don't have that right it's 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 a means of the muslim ummah being once again networked if not necessarily united, but at the very least networked. This is my proposed future. Right? Wallahu alam whether it happens, but we can pray for that. Because the Quran has already set out the significance and, and, and exposed the significance of Makkah, Medina, Ardul Muqaddasa and so on there. And we need to exploit the potential of these sacred territories for the benefit of the greater Muslim Ummah. Right? And it can be done. It can be done. You know, it would be wonderful to hear a different Imam standing in Makkah al Mukarrama giving a different message in his own mother tongue to the people out there. And scholars from, out, from throughout the world giving their messages or teaching in the Haram of Makkah al Mukarrama. Not state appointed scholars for dollars who are doing it right now. When we Muslims feel more alienated in the sacred territories of Makkah and Medina than we do in our own countries. And that's something we need to wake up to. These are the realities we need to wake up to and we need to be vociferous about it. We need to stop being sentimental. Our sentimentality is because of the sanctity of those sites. Our sentimentality is not because of those people who govern it. We need to create the distinction between the two. Those governments will come and go and hopefully they'll go quicker than normal. But the point is we need to chart out a possible future for this sacred territory. We need to at least work on it. Dare to dream. What's stopping us? Dare to dream. That dream, inshallah ta'ala, with Allah's mercy, could become a reality. Right? And we should pray for that, inshallah ta'ala. And we pray to Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah frees these sacred territories of Makkah al Mukarram and Al Madinah al Munawwar and Ardul Muqaddasa from the hands of the Yahudi and the Saudi. Right? And we are freed from the clutches of capitalism which encroaches upon these sacred territories, reminding us constantly that, you know what, you may profess Islam with your tongue, but you know what, we've got your cities under siege. Yeah. And they make you make tawaf all over the place. Why? As, as a, you know, once again, as a tribute to the idols of consumerism. All the big wigs, all the big names. Go there, come, 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 play your obeisance to us. We need to get over it. Allah give us the Tawfiq and Hidayah, inshaAllah ta'ala. Jazakum Allah khilza wa ma'alayin al-balah.